Hey guys, today we get to talk about a apology from Alex Bricini, my statement and commitment to the Magic community. This apology comes after he top aided Los Angeles. He received a lot of hate. Alex, if you don't know, he was banned twice for cheating. He was caught multiple times on videos cheating. And Outside of Mike Long, the only reason I would put Mike Long ahead of Alex in terms of, quote, best cheater is because Meryl, Mark Rosewater, has wanted Mike Long, this incredibly entertaining cheater, to be in the Hall of Fame. Very few people want Alex Bracini to be in the Hall of Fame because he's not as entertaining. Now, Alex has a very long history of cheating. You don't get banned two times, not once, two times without having cheated at least a dozen, maybe a hundred times. Remember, you don't get caught for cheating every single time you cheat. Now, Alex blames this on a combination of performance, uh, having to win, having to show how smart he is, uh, being accepted, and having to show that he belongs. And this, these are emotions that I think a lot of us can relate to as Magic players, uh, needing to be accepted. Now, cheating. Uh, is cheating acceptable in our community? I would argue no. I mean, the fact that there is an argument here shows that some people do accept cheating and do want these cheaters voted into the Hall of Fame. Most notable, the face of Magic, Mero, would love if the Hall of Fame was 100% entertaining WWE cheaters. So the big question he asks, why have you never found come forward about this? You must be unrepentant and you haven't learned. So he lists a few reasons and then he admits he cheated. I'm not sure what compels someone to cheat. Could it be the money? Could it be the fame? Could it be the opportunities that Wizard Coast grants you, such as camera time and or promoting your girlfriend to the entire YouTube audience that they have? So, I think that cheating, he says cheating is often irrational. Uh, it's irrational in terms of expected value, but it is a built from behaviors, repeat behaviors. It's not like you learn cheating, it's not like you never cheated and then out of the blue you decide to cheat then. No, you have a pattern of cheating and you continue on and eventually you get caught because you're not careful enough. So he mentions playing merfolk um, and the sour of temptation. And the reason this is so important is he was caught for cheating Kiera. Uh, the double explorer is a very famous cheat. He doesn't talk about those. But he talks about this one because this one it's easier for you to think it's a mistake. So if you wanted to apologize, I would tackle the ones that are, are the four card brainstorm. I would tackle the ones that were more obvious and explain those. And I would take, I wouldn't even go with the route. Even if I had made a mistake, I would not even admit that I made a mistake, I would say I cheated. Because that's the only way that he can get out of this. My mindset was toxic, very toxic. My actions may have directly hurt others, but no one, but there was no one that my thoughts were more toxic than for myself. What they did to me, how dare they, I felt slighted, I felt cheated. The irony is not lost upon him about that statement. So when you get caught cheating, 
like in the double explore when someone asks Alex, how do you have so much land in play? And he says two explorers, which doesn't explain how he is that much ahead of land. The only explanation is he actually put more land in play. That is lying. So cheating is often followed by lying and lying about that you cheated. And this is what happened with Alex. So one of the things that many people do not like about Alex is when he came back to a Star City Games tournament, they asked him what his favorite card was. He said, explore. Obviously a reference to the most famous cheat. I also saw an image on his Facebook where he has two explorers and glasses or something. He clearly has made this a foundation of his brand. He's not ashamed and he won't apologize. When you have someone who's so... If... I will take a real life example. One of my workers, she has a relative who went to jail recently. He is in jail. When you go to jail, society puts, and especially for the crime that he did, he's put on a certain list for a long time. The reason our society does that is to prevent people from uh, committing this certain crime. You guys can probably understand what it is. It is something that judges, magic judges, have been convicted of and accused of sexual crimes. The reason that people who are convicted of sexual crimes are put on this list many times for life is to really prevent other people from trying to do that. And if someone loses, uh, this guy, he loves the internet, he loves anime, and that's how he got in trouble was he got convicted, and he, according to my worker, he's in jail right now due to underage that he had and passed on a disease to at least one underage female. The reason our society is so harsh against this type of deviation is it re really ruins someone's life. Imagine if you're a 12-year-old, 14-year-old, you don't know better, and now you have a sexually transmitted disease for the rest of your life that you have to deal with. I would not wish that upon anyone and in, in no society. I think that's, it's very bad. So we put you on a list forever. However, we took away everything that you valued. And you still came back and did the same thing. My goodness. You didn't have anything to lose. Alex is in the same position. He has been marked a cheater. His reputation has tanked to oblivion. What does he have to lose if he cheats and gets banned again? I mean, he's been banned twice. It has not affected him. What does he have to lose? And that is the same scenario. If someone cre uh, commits that type of crime, goes to jail, loses everything, is now a felon, and is once he gets out of jail, will have a very difficult time finding living, will have a difficult time being accept accepted by society. What do they have to lose? They've already lost everything. So who is Alex currently? Alex is the biggest cheater in Magic. He is associated with a lot of bad things, including calling judges, including rule sharking, the two warning system, I believe was changed due to Alex's ex exploiting it. I mean, imagine the two warning system where if you made a mistake, you get a warning, then you make another mistake, you get a warning. And that's really for new players. That's not for, that's for new players when they make a mistake. It's not for people to abuse who know better. But as we have seen in multiple videos, all the cheaters abuse the system. And a lot of you might say, oh, they're just playing the game. Well, then the game needs to change. If the game has 95% cheaters, your game is effed. And you need to have some type of regulation. 
All right, now Alex makes the hilarious and ill-advised argument that he is good for the game. I don't know. Um, so let's just address Grand Prix Los Angeles where he makes the top eight. It qualifies him for the Pro Tour in February, and he's very excited. However, I would be lying if it, I said it wasn't bittersweet, very bittersweet, and who's to blame for that me? I blame myself to the reaction to my success this weekend. I never told my story and simply let the world believe all the awful things about me, caught on camera. While some are true, many are also untrue. So he talks about the Teffy hero, the extra loyalty, which Tom Martell has mentioned on Twitter. And the way he explains it is very odd for someone who is about openness. I didn't, so the opponent says, it's fine, you're winning this game anyway, regardless. So a lot of times cheaters kind of rationalize it as, oh, I can't be cheating because I'm already ahead. But yes, you can cheat when you're ahead just to make sure that you're, you are more ahead. Like cheating doesn't happen when you have a 1% chance of winning. Cheating often happens when you have a 60 or 70 or 80% chance of winning and you want to secure it. So whenever I hear about the discussion that I didn't cheat because I was so far ahead, that's not logically true. That's something a only a cheater would say, right? Like, it doesn't make any sense. So the other acquisition was Ari Lax. And imagine this system where a judge has to shuffle everyone's cards every single time. Is this the game that you guys signed up? Ari calls the judge, and now every time... Either Ari or Alex needs to shuffle a deck. Because remember, if Alex shuffles your deck, he can do stuff to your deck. And if you shuffle his deck, he gets to cut it. So, surprisingly, the judge refuses to continue to shuffle the people's decks. Because he just had enough. Imagine every single game... You need a judge or multiple judges to watch the game. And not only watch the game, but to shuffle the deck. You have a personal butler. That's insane. That cannot be the way this game is supposed to be played. And yes, this is his rendition of the events. Um, if you ask someone else, they do have a different version. If you ask Tom Martell... He will say that this guy cheated three times to make the top eight. True, I am not in control of the actions of others, but the perception and precautions taken were ones that were sparked directly from my actions in the past. Who do I want to be? Now, why? what is the whole point of writing this? The whole point of writing this is for him to gain fans to gain people who love him and trust him. And you would be surprised by the comments I receive on these videos. Like the one about Dan, the guy commented, the guy who Dan cheated, so the guy who got cheated commented and said that Dan would never cheat. <laughs> All right. If Dan's going to cheat on the pro tour with two teammates and get everyone disqualified, remember, it's not just him. It's the two other people who are, Probably not very happy that Dan cheated. Or maybe they knew that he was cheating. Everyone's cheating. I don't know. I, I've never made a pro tour, so I can't tell you. I, maybe, I, at this point, I have to assume that 95% of people are cheating on a pro tour, given what I've heard. But regardless of that, the people that he's cheating will support him and say that, no, Dan's a nice guy. He never cheats. And... To the point that they made a podcast. This Karen Game thing made a podcast against me. Saying, with Dan. My goodness, right? Like, how... And this is, the, this is the game store that hosted the event. Where he was an employee of. I mean, when you talk about ridiculousness, right? The guy 
goes on my YouTube video, the guy who he cheated on camera, by the way, and it turns out the guy who was cheating was an employee of the game store hosting the event. Like, wow. Wow, collusion, right? Anyway, uh, so this dog is really up. He's real proud of Alex. You have no reason to remember me. I, If you stay true to what you're saying, I would love to be around you again. Ah, yes, Daniel Fortine, uh, MTG headquarters' favorite character who rips on him. Also a fan of Alex Pacini. Is it surprising to you that you see the same names all the time? And the same names think, think believe a meme is really dangerous, but they think this guy is just great. It's best best thing since sliced bread. I mean, I typically don't make videos this long, but I, de I mean, the video was supposed to be over, but I want to show you the comments. I want to show you the mentality of Magic players at the professional level because it's something that I, as a casual player, can not, never understand. Heads up, everyone deserves a second chance. This guy's been banned two times. And you will see how many people say this quote. Everyone deserves a second chance. No, he's gotten his second chance and he was banned right away. This is actually not his second chance. I've been there. Man, it's awesome you're sharing your side finally. And this person says, our staff found him to be a very nice guy. Being nice does not mean you're not a cheater. I think people are really confused by this concept. Most nice people in magic, they tend to be cheaters. The reason is they want to distract you. They want to uh, you not to focus. One of the nicest people I know in magic, he steals cards. And I call him out all the time. And I'm no longer his friend because I didn't know he was doing this. You know, I also gave him the benefit of the doubt, but when he did it more than once, I concluded that this is a pattern of behavior, just like people can conclude with Alex. Glad you came clean and hopefully the future is bright. What the? My good man writing in an article, everyone deserves a second chance. Again, not his second chance, he was banned two times, caught cheating at least 10 times. Explore, Kiara, four card brainstorm, Sour Temptation, among many other ones. This respect, respect for a cheater. Go play another game. We don't owe you a redemption arc. Well, well while I don't believe you, I do tip my hat to you. Come on, like, one thing that you could do is, would help a lot would be write an article about the times you cheated and were not caught. Yeah, I mean, that would be impressive. I've never seen anything like that before, right? Uh, normally when someone's caught for a crime, they just, you know, if they want to come clean, they just admit to that crime. But many times you, they, that person has committed other crimes. I live in one of the poorest places in America. I've said this many times, and um, either either my employees have background history problems, uh, which come comes out in the background check, or they have relatives, or they know people. And I've always said this: you need to do, disassociate yourself, um, even if they are your family members. Uh, if they create, they committed murder, uh, sexual presentation of underage males and females uh, because we're not going to like be an amazing startup if we have individuals who have a history. I, I might get into detail about this, but one of the people that I started my company with, uh, he had a very notorious background, just very famous. And I did not know about it. He did not disclose it. And when we found out, we lost half of our clients. Uh, and it was devastating, and I was able to buy his shares from the company. I've always believed this, and you might not believe me for saying this, 
but it's always been my belief that people don't change. Who, If you are an honest person, you will continue to be an honest person. And even if circumstances are tough, you'll still be honest. If you are a dishonest person, even if circumstances are amazing and you make lots of money, you, you're still going to be a Bernie Madoff. You can still cheat more people now. So the only difference is instead of cheating a few people, you have more audience to cheat. Um, and I think some YouTubers are like that. I've been very adamant about calling them out. I don't know. My, my point, I guess, to conclude is I'm in the business of uh, knowing people. I hire people. For the last five years, I hired and let go people. And we've had some really bad workers and we had some really good ones. But what happened is if someone's late their first day, they're going to be late their second day. If someone takes a two-hour, 22-minute lunch, they're going to take that two-hour plus lunch every single day. If someone's sick whenever it's convenient for them, they will continue to be sick whenever it's convenient for them. People don't change who they are. If you are irresponsible and you behave in a very... um, No amount of training, no amount of changing the circumstance can change who you are. A cheater will always remain a cheater. It's because when the first time you cheated, you had a lot to lose. At this point in time, Alex has nothing to lose. What does he have to lose? His reputation? Money? The money, he can just, uh, he doesn't have to give it back if he doesn't want to. Power nine? I mean, what does he have to lose at this point? He's already lost it all. He's lost respect. He's lost reputation. And he's lost to the point that a judge has to sit there and shuffle both players. I mean, think about what, think about that for a moment. That a judge has to sit there and shuffle everyone's their decks because he cannot be trusted with that. That's where we are. If you don't have anything to lose because you've already lost it, in this case twice, what makes me think that you're going to change? People don't change. I truly, honestly believe that. Um, and luckily, we have Facebook. And face the and I my friends when I was younger, they're still my friends today, and they still have the same characteristics that made them my friends. And we're still nerdy. We still play original Innistrad. Uh, what was it? Fifth Dawn. We just cracked a box and drafted one of those. Your circumstance can change and that can amplify certain characteristics that you already have. But the characteristics don't change. So I, I live in one of the poorest places in America. And no matter how many people tell me it's, oh, it's a great place. It's, great, it's not. The demographics of Humble, Texas, 77396, just Google it, and we are in the bottom 5% of America. So I see, you know, we have hired criminals before, we've hired felons before, and you might be like, Tony, that's insane, why would you do that? Because I want to believe people can change. I really want to. That is the Google philosophy, right? The Google philosophy is... uh, Let's train a homeless person to make a app. And this actually happened, by the way. It's not like fake. And then that person will make $100,000 from this cool app. Let's teach them how to develop. Um, I teach coding all the time in local schools. Uh, the more, and some of these schools don't even have computers. Like, so I bring as many, many computers as I have with me, and they just type on it and kind of wreck them, but it's okay because. It's worth it, in my opinion, because coding is a way out for them. It's a way for for them to better their lives. Uh, I I really do believe that. So long rant, uh, but I did want to. I did want to address some things, and I, I guess my main point is I've seen a lot of really crazy bat cra- bat crazy stuff from having a company for five years. Or this company was 
three years, the previous company was two. And whenever we employ someone, if their behavior is really bad initially, it only gets worse. And if they're, if they're an honest person, they will remain honest. If they're dishonest and they steal from you, it's only a matter of time before your iPads, your MacBooks, your iMacs go missing, your credit cards. We had a person openly admit in text message that she was screenshotting um, confidential employee um, information as well as screenshotting using our iPad, which I assume was, we had a person screenshot client list all this stuff and then she created a uh, competing agency and later she found out it's not that easy and getting clients is difficult like you would think that was crazy right but it happened so i deal with alex with people like alex all the time and you give them a chance then you give them another chance but that's it that's where you draw the line. The second chance is where you draw the line. Because at some point in time, there's no hope. There's no hope. You are what you are. And I know there are some crazy examples you guys will provide me of a person who changes. The reason that you remember those examples is because they are the exception. Yeah, it would be nice if everyone could do that, but they are the exception. Anyway, this video is super long and I don't even know what I'm going to have at the end of the video. Um, but anyway, bye guys.